Um, so what I was saying was that around the nose and the ears and maybe even up in the eyes, we get a little more red because they're fleshier. When the light comes through that flesh, we see some of the some of the tint or the hue of the blood coming through. Mm -hmm. um, and so around the nose, my transition color is very red. But around the bridge of the nose, where it's more structure and bone, I'm using cadmium orange as my transition color uh, because it's more appropriate to the the amount of light that's getting through the skin. I don't. I would never say that I stipple, but once I get to this point, I do have a very light stroke that <coughs> maybe bounces a little bit across the canvas. And one thing I'm noti noticing now is I think this right nostril comes too far out. Um, you know, it might need to be right about here. But you know, what's great about this is that I can. I don't ever have to live with the mistake I made during drawing. If I wanted to end right there, I end it right there. Maybe I need to change the paint a little more. I'm blocking in some of my shadows. Uh, when you block something in, it doesn't have the transition, it doesn't have the subtle undulation in color, but it's good for when you blow your eyes and you assess structure and value and you say, is this heading in the right direction? If the answer is yes, then keep going. Put a little light now and start to blend this in and make it feel part of this painting. There's a bit of a, right there at the, below the bridge of the nose is where the bone structure starts and the cartilage ends. And a lot of times we'll find a slightly harsher shadow right there. I want to come and indicate that on both sides. If you, if you smooth out skin too much, and I learned this the hard way over the years because I'm kind of compulsive by nature. Uh, it looks too much like a Photoshop document and not enough like a person. Um, it's those subtle undulations and shifts in value and tone, all those things that are true on a person that are not true if you feather and blend and, and overwork your canvas. Um, what you're seeing on the computer screen, I guess I'm looking at is a little yellow. So just keep in mind that uh, it's got a warmer, richer tone to it. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm looking at the computer screen at this point because it offers the opportunity to see a flattened version of it. And what I'm noting is the highlight on the bridge is really very strong, and it's not competing well with the highlights uh, in other places. So um, I might want to come back in. And strengthen the highlights over here. And this is a shadow. I think this is probably the nose leans a little too far to the right. And so I'm going to go ahead and knock this back into that shadow so I stop seeing it poke out so far. And here in a moment, we're going to be in a position where I would consider the underpainting of the first round uh, pretty well wrapped up. I wouldn't want to spend too much more time on the nose because um, I'm, I'm, then I'm obsessing on the nose out of context, 
and I think when you do something like that, you can waste a lot of time. So at this point, I might move on to the eyes, and then to the cheeks, and then to the mouth. I don't typically jump to a whole new section. I like to work my way there, uh, because then at that point, everything is in the context of the things you've done before it. Um, you'll find that you'll identify your mistakes easier, you'll blend colors, you'll justify light source. All of these things come easier in the context of more things. And so before you spend too much time on any one thing, move on. You might find that it was better than you thought once you start to justify your light source. You might find that it's a different solution than you once anticipated, but um, everything is easier to handle in context. So don't get hung up too far before you move on. And I've been using this uh, liquid. Uh, it's an extender medium, which means it helps the paint flow better. Uh, it also helps the paint dry faster. And so uh, historically, people think, well, oil paint takes such a long time to dry. I wouldn't want to do that. But uh, this should be dry by tomorrow enough that I could get a second coat on it. Certainly by the next day, we'll have a good dry patch here. Um, if you use too much of it, though, it creates a really glossy portion. Uh, and it also changes the opacity, so where the pigments are spread out so far that you're not getting a good, rich color. So I always use it in moderation. I have its own pile, and I'll dip in it, and then I'll mix it. And so I'm constantly dipping and, and mixing it into my new colors. Um, all right. I don't know how to pause it, LV. You can just go into your pile, and I'll, I'll edit out any. Oh, I think I'm good. I'm going to let her take over for a bit. Are you done? Can you just click this Let's one? Just green, green. 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 Green.